Oh, I'll tell you right now. This here is a Kia. You join me inside the 2021 Kia Telluride Nightfall Edition. And the Telluride is fresh off its debut for the 2020 model year, where it won tons of awards and accolades because people saw a handsome, feature-rich, good-driving, high-value SUV that just so happened to have a Kia badge on it. And Kia is trying to build on the momentum of last year by bringing more style and substance to the Telluride. That, of course, doesn't mean that long-standing rivals are just going to stand idly by. We've got the Honda Pilot and the Toyota Highlander. And when you add all the luxury features together, we can get into the entry-level luxury segment. So what I want to find out is whether the Telluride is really that good, if it's really best in segment, or if maybe it just surprised people last year. That's today on Miles Per Hour. And there it is. The 2021 Kia Telluride SX all-wheel drive nightfall edition. This one is painted in the new for 21 wolf gray color that depending on the lighting looks silver, gray, or even blue. It's a spectacular paint color. You can see that metallic flake on the surface there. And I also love that Kia won't charge you a dime for it or any of the paint colors for the Telluride. You can choose from a number of them that go with this Nightfall exterior package that we will get into in just a sec. But first, let's chat briefly about the channel because if you haven't subscribed yet, I would encourage you to do so. It will give you access to daily POV day drives, POV night drives, live Q&As, and reviews like this one. You don't want to miss out on any of that. So just hit subscribe and tap the bell to get notified. So you can just start enjoying. And if you have been enjoying, you want to support the channel. You can do so simply by liking, commenting, and sharing this video. Or you can go above and beyond. Get yourself a miles per hour t-shirt like the one I'm wearing. Or become a patron on our Patreon account. Bunch of perks for you. All of it just going to support the channel. And however you want to support us, we super duper appreciate it. Keep that car content flowing. And without further ado, back to the Telluride Nightfall Edition. So with its introduction for the 2020 model year, not much has changed for 21 apart from this Nightfall package. If you choose that, you're going to get blacked out details, including blacked out lettering for Telluride up on top of the grill, blacked out high gloss border, around the grill, these unique rectangular inserts within the grill, a blacked out Kia badge with gray letters, then on the bottom on this chin piece more blacked out high gloss, and if you choose actually one more thing, two more things, this air channel on the side is in black gloss, it is functional, look at that. And then the bezels for these headlights are in black. And it's cool because it really helps the headlights and the daytime running lights pop from within these darker housings. If you choose the SX model and above, you're going to get LED headlights as standard, projector beam LED headlights. All Tellurides are going to get LED daytime running lights. The SX trim is also going to give you these LED fog lights down here. And it makes for a unique face to the Telluride. Helps you distinguish the 2020 to the 21, because of course for 21, we get the Nightfall, whereas 2020 didn't have this package. And you gotta love the amber daytime running lights. It just is now become almost iconic. Seeing this vehicle on the road, you know immediately what it is if it's got those amber daytime running lights. Looks so good, super clean. I like the sculpting on the hood. And then coming to the side now, we've got that long hood, flat, leading down into 20 inch wheels. SX models are gonna get black gloss 20 inch wheels. The Nightfall Edition changes up the wheel design. So yes, they're still 20 inches, still black high gloss, but now 
we've got this chunkier, blockier design to the wheel that I like. It almost looks like a rally wheel to me, my personal opinion. And then you've got black chrome lugs in there, a black centerpiece with that Kia badging. The only thing I don't like, well, one, actually, no, I, I don't mind. I don't mind the Primacy Tour tires on this vehicle. It's not a performance vehicle. I was going to critique those, but no issues there, really. It's the, the fact that so much of the vehicle being blacked out. Then you get to the brake calipers and they're a painted silver and they just stand out from within the wheels, but them not being high performance brakes or anything, you don't want those things to stand out. So the fact that they do just kind of takes away from a cool looking profile to the vehicle. You've got these plastic wheel arch cladding pieces that I don't mind at all. It's an SUV supposed to look a little more rugged and then that black plastic cladding continues along the side but you got this black trim piece here to break that up that's part of the nightfall package body color matching door mirrors part of the XX and then coming up here we got this black chrome trim that adds a little pizzazz to the side of the car and then these black trim pieces in here are part of the Nightfall package. And the black gloss for the roof rails, that's also Nightfall edition. Roof rails come on the SX and above. The blacked out, that's Nightfall. Good looking profile. Doesn't look like as big of a vehicle as it feels when you're inside it. Inside you're like, this has so much space, we got three rows. And there, as we will find out, there's space in all three rows. But when you look at it here, and dimensionally, me fitting it into my garage had no issues. It just doesn't look like as big of a vehicle as it is. But I like the profile, no fuss, just clean lines, particularly like this character line that stretches all the way from the tail light to the nose of the vehicle. That one continuous line draws the eye. I like the D pillar back here, more of that chrome, black chrome and the design. We've got a roof mounted spoiler, not overly done, black treatment around the windows there. Rear three quarter looking nice. You can see those LED tail lights that are going to be standard on all Tellurides. A lot of black plastic cladding down here. Doesn't bother me all that much. Nightfall gives you blacked out high gloss lettering for the trim, for the Telluride across the tailgate, again for the Kia badge, for the all wheel drive, and then for this diffuser piece. And then we've got these dual, I don't know, trapezoidal exhaust ports, not a particular shape. Look square from head on. Down here you can see they bow up don't love the diffuser piece um, it just I don't know it actually I don't I think it's the the exhaust I don't like the shape of the exhaust I would much prefer generic circles or ovals to these trapezoidal things they draw the eye in, in not a great way and you expect to see them perhaps on the other side as well but instead you've got this just bump piece there this one also has the towing package so you get the hitch, and at 421 we upgraded from a 4-pin connector to a 7-pin. Modernity. It's a good move, Kia. And then looking at the back full-on, handsome rear end, goes with the cl cleanness of the car. The whole exterior is just, it's effortlessly designed, and that's why I think the Telluride is so broadly appealing to so many people. It's just a good design for an SUV. And I, it really has elevated the Kia brand, the premium look and feel of this vehicle. And so that's the exterior of the Telluride SX all-wheel drive Nightfall. And with that, let's head on inside to see what they've done in here.
And on our way in, we can see we've got smart key access. Unlike some vehicles though, we can leave the key in your pocket and just pull on the door handle to unlock it. You have to press the button right here to unlock it and press the button again to lock it. Not a big deal, you got one extra step. Front two doors have the smart key access, rear doors do not. Open up and we can see the black Napa leather interior here. Black is gonna be your only interior color option if you choose the wolf gray exterior. If you choose some of the other color options, you can choose different leather colors. And it's Napa leather as opposed to their <laughs> lesser leather because this vehicle has the Prestige package. So we've got the SX, all wheel drive, Prestige, and Nightfall on top of that. It is loaded to the gills. These Napa leather seats look and feel fantastic. We've got perforation in the leather. I like the designs here with this gray contrast stitch going down the center. Heated and ventilated front seats with memory functions. No massaging, but hey, what do you expect? It is a mainstream vehicle. Down here, we've got 12-way power adjustments, including some for the thigh support. So you can find a comfortable position for sure. We've got these aluminum tread plates that glow at night. Telluride on the carpeting. Aluminum pedals. This is all gonna be plastic. We've got some controls here for your active safety features and for your trunk release, we can hold that. It's gonna beep at me a couple times and then release the trunk. Not needing to hold the button. If you wanna close it, hold it one more time. And unlike some luxury vehicles where when you let go of the button, it will stop the door closing. In this case, when you started the process, it's just gonna go all the way. Looking at the door trim, we've got a soft touch material up here. It's got some give to it. And then this faux wood grain, this is some of the nicest looking faux wood grain I've seen on any vehicle. It has texture to it. It looks really high quality up close. I looked on forums and like so many people were confusing it for real wood trim that they were going out and getting pledge wipes like to take care of it like it was real wood. It's not real wood, but hey, what an honor to Kia that people think they have to take care of it like real wood. We've got this aluminum trim in here, more of that softer touch material. This is real leather with that gray contrast stitching. Feels nice. This transitions to harder plastics. I wish we had this same kind of softer material with that give, the injection molding, not the hard plastics up here, up so high. Hard plastics down here are fine. Hard plastics even in here are okay. I just wish up here this was that injection molding. But then we've got our window switches here with this nice aluminum trim at the top of them, along with this bordering up here. You've got power folding door mirrors. Hello. Goodbye. And then our lock and unlock. The grab handle feels pretty solid. It doesn't feel super cheapy. Moving on down to the Harman Kardon 12 speaker 3D sound system that is standard on the SX trim. You don't have to go prestige package to get this. And it's a decent sound system. It is not Harman Kardon's best sound system and Harman Kardon isn't the best speaker manufacturer. So come in with reasonable expectations. It's not gonna satisfy the biggest audio files. It'll satisfy everyone else. Down here, we've got the hard plastics that I mentioned and then a fairly shallow door cubby. You're not gonna fit big items in here. Think laptop or envelopes. And this tiny little water bottle holder is just gonna fit a 16 ounce bottle, nothing bigger. But we'll do that big bottle test later. Don't you worry. Then up here, we're looking at a suede headliner that is part of the prestige package. And let me tell you, it's not name brand Alcantara here, it's Kia's interpretation, but it is one of the softest, plushest headliners I've ever seen on any vehicle. It's really nice. And you've got that power sunroof right there, and then a secondary moonroof. It's not a pano, I mean, that is a pano secondary sunroof, but it's not a one continuous piece of glass like we're seeing on some vehicles, but it brings in plenty of light. And with that, let's hop in. Close up this door. Nice solid sound. Fire it up. Quick pan of the interior. And 
back to the steering wheel now. Leather border there, feels really nice. We've got this contrast stitch on the inside to match the color of contrast stitch on the seats. This is a faux stitched injection molded cover for the steering wheel. I'll take it. It's better than just a blank piece, blank piece, blank piece, hard to say, of hard plastic on here. This injection molding looks and feels a bit nicer than that. We've got the Kia Crest right there. And then looking to the right side of the steering wheel, this brush metal look, these are indeed plastic pieces, but they look nice. And then we've got a knurled finish on this control here and this one here to bring up the upscale feel. Some of your active safety features can be found over here. Adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic, auto emergency braking, all of that is standard on this vehicle. And you also have a blind spot monitor camera. So this will show what's in your blind spot, much like Honda lane sensing on the left and right hand side though. That's a pretty cool detail. I love that feature. And that is standard on all Tellurides or all those safety features. Very cool. If you want to change up what information is on the TFT display, first off, you're going to get a 3.5 inch TFT as standard on the Telluride if you go SX. I think it's actually EX or SX and above. Can't remember. You're going to upgrade to the 7 inch TFT display with more information, more screen real estate. It looks okay. The resolution's fine and the amount of information shown is fine. I would really love to see an upgrade to a fully digital instrument cluster in the next, I don't know, the, the refresh of the Telluride that will come in a couple years. But for now, this is okay. I do like that you get a knurled finish on the borders of the um, TAC, sorry, TAC on the left, Speedo on the right. I was thinking the word analog is what I was thinking. Analog, Speedo, and TAC. Analog oil temperature and fuel gauge. Speaking of fuel and fuel economy, this vehicle with the all-wheel drive gets 19 city, 24 highway, and 21 combined. If you go front-wheel drive, you'll get two more MPG. So let's change up what we're seeing here on the TFT. Right now we got trip computer, and we can scroll through that. We've got speed, what drive mode are you in, fuel economy, and more trip data. Press that button, we got a compass. And now we've got some of your active safety, active safety stuff, where the power is going to which wheel, tire pressure, and lane keeping assist. Then here we've got our adjustments for the head-up display. Yes, this vehicle is head-up display, and it'll show your speed, the posted speed limit, and if you have any active safety features turned on, those will show up up there. Not the biggest head-up display I've seen, not the highest resolution, but it gets the job done. Keeping your peripherals informed while not having to take your eyes off the road. These settings in here, and we're back to the trip data. So as you can see, not a ton of information, but it it works okay. Does just fine. Should do the turn signals there with the monitors, and you do have one touch, of course. You just hit that half pull, and it will indicate on for a couple seconds. Here's more of that wood trim, more of the brush metal. This up here is genuine stitch, so fake stitch, real stitch, but this is injection molded. It's not all leather up here. Would like to see that as leather, but you know what? We're talking about a 50K as tested price point, fully loaded, so I'll give that a pass. Infotainment. So as standard, you're getting an eight inch touchscreen infotainment with the SX, or sorry, EX and above, you're gonna get a 10.25 inch display and you can only control it via touch. I wish you could control it via a secondary rotary knob or something down here like BMWs and Mercedes-Benz vehicles. Instead, you just have to touch it. And that's okay because it's pretty user-friendly and customizable, but it would be nice if you do a voice command. Sorry, that's another way you can control it. Voice commands over here. Um, but it would be nice if you add a more analog and and uh, non non distracting way to control the infotainment but we got a map and navigation and it's fairly responsive the resolution isn't the, the highest that I've seen but it's decent for this vehicle's price territory Sirius XM radio Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are gonna be standard not wireless so that's another thing I would like to see I'd love to see full wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto these tiles can be changed up here. 
go to menu and you can edit the home widgets you can put in different information in there to customize your display and then more widgets can be found over here including this one love this if you've seen this on any hyundai or kia vehicles the sounds of nature so if you're really having a rough day and you want to just imagine you're in a snowy village physical volume knob cool you can crank that up or calm sea waves rainy day if you really want to pretend you're in a cafe that sounds awful and then a fireplace so those are the sounds of nature we've seen it before but it's cool and then more settings over here you also have a quiet mode which will kind of dumb down all of the infotainment and convenience features and including the volume for the sound system to just help you relax while driving so that is the infotainment. And then we also have a surround view camera system as part of the SX trim level. So you turn this on and you go into reverse or drive. We'll start with reverse. You can see we got that bird's eye view. And then we've got a couple different backup angles. We've got one overhead, then this one looking at the rear wheels. Go to drive. And now we're looking at the front, still a bird's eye, but now we got that wide front angle, overhead front and each of the front wheels. That is cool. Down here, we've got some nice button redundancies and knobs. We've got this knurled finish here for the volume knob. We've got a map button, nav, radio, media. Here are your hazards, in case you wanna see that. Seek, that's funny. Still to see that, that's, that's interesting. And then your tuner over there. Here we've got a heated steering wheel that is part of the SX trim. I don't know why I went here. Like you're not gonna see the heat pouring off the steering wheel, but I just decided that was a good idea. And then some really nice big readouts for your dual zone climate control. I really like how big they are. Not that I'm blind, but it's just so nice to just in your peripherals, just see what the temperature is and have this physical knob that you can crank to just the right setting of temperature. And then you've got, of course, auto. Down below, we can see our heated and ventilated seats with three stages of each. So press up and continue pressing up to level down on your heating. Same deal, continue pressing down to level down on your cooling ventilation. And then we've got this contrast stitch and this leather border piece here. That's really nice. And then we've got a leather topper to this gear selector here and that same brushed metal look. Pretty sure it's plastic trim that we find in other parts of this cabin press that in and it's really easy to find which gear you're trying to get in so much better than the knobs or switches or whatever newfangled ideas they have had this is tried and true kia kudos on that then down here we've got our drive modes we've got comfort show up there sport Ooh, red smart eco and snow and so think sport, increased throttle response and quicker shifts. Smart is gonna like be like your auto mode, adapting to your driving behavior. Eco, kill the throttle response and comfort, just kind of mellow everything out and smoothen those shifts. Snow is gonna be optimizing your traction. And then you do have a center diff lock for this permanent all wheel drive system. Press that. And that plus eight inches of ground clearance mean that you can actually take this thing off road. I do like that we have physical buttons here for the start-stop system. You can leave that permanently off. You can press this to engage auto hold. So you can take your foot off the brake at a stoplight. This surround view button I already showed you and turn on and off the parking sensors. Love that these are all physical buttons. Quick, if you need to make the adjustments, every time you get in the car, you don't want that on, hit the button, super easy. These kind of interestingly shaped cup holders here, don't know too many bottles that are square like that, but hey, looks cool right then our key which looks just like 2020 except that we now have a remote start button on there this is cheaper plastic i wish this was like a uh, soft feeling not this hard plastic texture to it you do have kia down there and you've got this brushed chrome look to the side and i love that you have this kind of like trigger button here for your lock unlock trunk release and your panic but yeah i wish this felt a little nicer in the hands it's okay we'll give them a pass 
And then black gloss. There is a fair amount of black gloss in here. Pinot black trim that does scratch and smudge. You can see some of the smudges right there. This particular piece here is kind of the worst offender. The rest of it, ah, whatever, I'll, I'll let it slide. But here, I wish this wasn't black gloss. You do have that brushed metal piece down here. And here's what you're gonna press to release and shows you a 12 volt DC socket. You've got a USB there, another USB over there, and wireless smartphone charging. Wireless smartphone charging comes in just at the EX level. So EX and above are gonna get that. More of that faux wood grain trim across the passenger side dash. It looks really nice with that brushed metal trim beneath that. This is hard plastics. Open this up and you've got a wide, not necessarily tall and not too deep glove box here. Looking at the center console here, very soft, good squishy place to rest your arm. It doesn't slide forward and backward, so it's kind of just out of reach for me to just sit here and have my hands on the wheel apart from down here. If I wanted my hands up here with my elbow resting there, I couldn't do it. I wish this did slide forward or backward, but hey, can't have everything, I guess. Open that up and we've got this removable cubby here where you might stick your keys or something like that down there. This is a nice deep cubby, like there's my forearm pressed all the way down with my hand and a fist. And then we've got another USB port there. Close that up. Looking up here, we've got our backup, sorry, uh, rear view mirror is the word for that. No digital rear view mirror here. Another thing I would like to see in future Telluride models is a digital rear view mirror so you could cut through uh, the people or stuff that you have in the back of your vehicle to see out the back. Here, plastic, then open this up and you got a softer piece here to store your sunglasses. You can turn on these lights and these are LEDs, not incandescent. And this is sort of like your emergency response system here. So a operator will answer and if you need help, they'll get you help. Here's how we control that sunroof. Slide it on back, does so pretty quickly, but it stops right there. And no, you can't make it go any further back. You do have a wind buffer that comes up. That's good. Press it up, give you some of that ventilation. Down it goes. And then if you want to slide forward or backward, that visor, the sunshade, it does so pretty urgently. That's very quick. Good stuff there. Looking at the sun visors, more of this oh, nice and thick. That feels like luxury right there. Bring that down, big mirror, vanity mirror for the vain people. Slide that over, slide it back. Yes, it does, important. And then of course your grab handle right here, plastic, no nice materials there. And with that, let's go check out the rear compartment. Open that up. See nice wide opening doors, not completely to 90 degrees but to make it really easy to go in and out or if you've got a car seat or something that you need to stick back there, that's gonna be super easy to do so. Love that feature when cars have wide opening rear doors. Good stuff here. Captain's chairs are part of the SX trim level. You don't have the three across. That same design for the leather and contrast stitch on the seat inserts. Very comfortable seats back here too. Nice thick headrests. And yes, you do have armrests. These come down and adjust to whatever angle you want them to. That's good stuff. The backs of the seats are in plastic. But hey, at least you got this leather uh, envelope slot down here, an additional cubby where you could stick a smartphone. Very smart phone. <laughs> Very smart phone. Terrible joke, Miles. We do also have, as part of the prestige package, these sun visors back here that I cannot nail. Up, oh, got it. Look at that. And it covers the whole um, window. I love that. Some of these cover like this part and you're like, what's the point? Because sun's just going to come in right through here. This one covers the whole area. And importantly, check this out. One touch down and one touch up rear glass so cool why don't all automakers do that the few extra bucks it takes to develop that pay attention to everyone else 
injection molding top pieces here. That faux wood grain looks just as good back here. Nice solid door handle, leather. This is just like the front doors. They're not cheapening out back here. And that contrast stitch, hard plastics. And then heating and ventilation for the rear seats. For that second row of seating, heating and ventilation. That's crazy. That is part of the prestige package. This is on a Kia. Come on. Three stages for both too, not a one on or off. Another pretty shallow door pocket here. And again, just enough space for like a 16 ounce water bottle. More of this aluminum trim plate, trim uh, piece. Tread plate was the word I was looking for. You can fold up these seats. Well, let's hop in first. Grab handle, yay. Suede headliner, mm, nice. Oh, and here's a good look at the full size of that moonroof. All right, let's hop in and take a look around. So I do have the seat slid as far back as it goes. You can slide it forward to a middle position or what have you, but slid all the way back. Look at how much knee room I have. Six feet tall, that's my driving position. I can really stretch out because there are big foot pockets there, decrease that knee angle, and then you can recline the seat all the way here. Look at this. Really lounge back there. So nice. So yeah, the second row occupants have it made, especially with these armrests. This is good. This is very good. Whoop, and I just brought it up into my own back. Looking around back here though, so we've got this piano black trim piece, which I don't love surrounding these, again, oddly shaped cup holders. I don't love it because it's not gonna wear very well. This is definitely gonna get marked up as people put their water bottles or whatever in here. And it's just, after a couple of years, this is gonna look pretty ratty, as is this cheap plastic piece down here. Look down further though, got a DC socket, and then we've got a 115 volt AC socket. Good stuff, three prong. USB ports in the sides of these seats. And this is smart. So if you've got your smartphone sticking there, you can just be charging right there. You don't have to have a really long cord to do it. And because the cord is already up high, if you're using your phone while it's charging, that's just very convenient. That's, that's smart thinking, Kia. I like that. Let's just take a peek at this dashboard area from back here. That looks premium, guys. I think that just looks really nice. Up here, we have that third zone of climate control. So yes, each of these individual passengers don't have their own zone of climate control. You're gonna have to split it between all the people in the second and third row, but hey, at least you can choose. So temperature controls right here. Again, nice and big readout. You've got an auto, and then you've got your LED lights back here. And a grab handle up there, in addition to this one right there. So cool, the digs in the second row are really nice. Let's now check out the third row. Now to do that, we can press this button right here, which is going to push the seat forward and out of the way. And it slides it forward to a really nice um, access point to that third row. You're not having to really squeeze your body to get back there. Lift your foot up and then you just climb back. Let's look at these seats first though. Not the same designs on the seat backs as the first two rows. And I think that's a bummer. It would be nice to have that continuity it just looks so much better but they do still have some design to them. And now let's hop back there. Real easy to do that. And now sitting down, we can look at our digs. This is hard plastic. I wish there was like at least a pad of soft touch injection molding or leather or something. Leather is maybe asking you too much, but just a softer pad to rest your arm because that's just not gonna be comfortable after a while. You do have a cubby in here to maybe stick a book or something. Yes, people still read. Cup holder, stash pocket, and then your own USB port, and another one over there. So just the two passengers back here. You do have a third seat in there. It's a seven passenger vehicle. So this person is, uh, I don't know, gonna be fighting for that port up there maybe. Get a really long cord, dude, or do that. But yeah, the seats back here, feel pretty good. The headroom is okay. Leg room, let's see. So I'm gonna slide over here. You do have that middle pocket there so you can stretch out your, le your left leg if you're sitting in this seat, right leg if you're sitting in that seat. And yes, I do have some knee room. That's solid headroom. Well, if I sit upright, now my head is on the roof. If I lean forward slightly, 
then I have more room. But uh, yeah, so six footers with long torsos, probably not gonna wanna sit back here too long. However, there is an ace in the hole, and that is to recline the seats like that. Let me just show you how that looks. So normal seat in this position reclined there, and doing so gives you a bit more clearance Again, so clutch having foot pockets here so my feet can slide forward. If that was closed off, my knees would be pinched at this angle and it would not be comfortable for a long trip. But having the foot pockets means I can really lounge. And now, look at this. I've got headroom even with my head back. I don't have to lean forward. This is cool. Kia, well thought through. Yes, having the reclining third rows, clutch. Here's your seat belt for that middle seat there. We've got our own air vents, very important. Here's mics, so it's easy for these people back here to hear what the front passengers are saying. And then we've got our own little LEDs, your reading lights. Good stuff. And if you need to slide that seat forward, again, just press that button right there. And out of the way it goes. Getting out, just as easy as getting in. Little step, and you're set. If you want to fold these seats flat from this position, just pull up on that tab and press down, and now they're flat. Let's go to the trunk and show you the other way to do it. Press this button here. Up it goes. If I did have the key on me, I could have kicked at the sensor just under the diffuser and it would have opened that way. I don't have the key on me and the vehicle's on, so I can't do that. Looking back here, I will show you, JD the editor will show you, the cargo capacity behind the third row with the third row folded and then with all seats folded. Pretty impressive cargo space in this vehicle. Tell you ride printed out on this carpet back here. You got this metal um, plate here to protect your bumper from getting all scuffed up. If you want to fold these seats in the third row, no power controls, but this is just so easy. Just pull this, press forward, and it goes. Same thing, pull, and it's done. That's so easy. I love that. You don't need power controls for that third row. This is much more convenient. If you can do any amount of physical labor, do this. Raise the headrest. And yeah, it's just that easy. In this case, where that, that strap went a little further forward, I gotta lean a further in, but it's okay. And if you need to, adjust the angle a little more. There we go. And that's it. That's how you pull up and lower the third row of seats. For the second row, you've got these controls right in here. Hold for the left, which is already folded. So actually, we're looking at the right. Press that down. And again, you're gonna have to go to the side to press it all the way flat or just slide in whatever item you have and it will push the seat down. It's not gonna give you too much resistance. Let me just show you what it looks like with all the seats down. Mondo space. Mondo, Mondo space. Cool. While those are down, you can lift up the carpet here, which will give you access to this storage cubby underneath. Whoop, got ahead of myself. Storage cubby, take this out for a second. Show you this. Nice amount of space in there. You can store the cargo cover in there. Yes, it does have a cargo cover that will slot in right there. So additional storage there. And if you wanna use this as a stopper to keep whatever items you have from sliding around, you fit it in neatly there. And now, if you have that second row up, anything behind the second row is not going to go past this stopper piece here. Take it out, back in, down, pull this back. Pretty easy. Additional stuff back here. We've got hooks, we've got anchor points, and then we've got a DC socket. And that is the interior of the Kia Telluride.
Nice soft close there. Look at the fuel tank. We don't have capless fueling. I would like to see capless fueling, Kia. That would be great. But with that, we've got two last things to do. You know what they are. The first is the big bottle test. Yes, let's see where your big bottles can go in the Kia Telluride. Let's try the oddly shaped cup holders first. What do you know? It doesn't fit because this isn't a squared base for this bottle. So no, can't go there. It could, in a pinch, go where your wireless smartphone is charging, but that's not ideal. Door pockets, very shallow as I said, so that's just not gonna work. Last spot, center console, lift that up. It's nice and deep. Yes, fits easily. You can fit a couple of these big water bottles in there. So there you go. Your big bottles fit in the Kia Telluride. That's a pass. And finally, we're just gonna rev it and go take it for a drive. All right, let's start things off with a Telluride turning radius test. Flipped around here. Oh, that is tidy. That's really tidy, wow. All right, and now let's dig into that 3.8 liter V6 which makes 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. Oh. It's connected to an eight-speed automatic gearbox in your choice of either front-wheel drive, or if you go nightfall, you're gonna have to get all-wheel drive. That's gonna give you a zero to 60 time of seven seconds flat and a top speed of 132 miles an hour with all-wheel drive. Speaking of all-wheel drive, fuel economy for that is going to be 19 city, 24 highway, and 21 combined. And yes, if you wanted to get better fuel economy, you're not gonna have the option of a four cylinder or hybrid like you do in some of the competitors. But this V6 is really, it's a peach of an engine. It's got plenty of power for getting up to speed on the highway or making a quick maneuver or motoring around town. And the fuel economy numbers, as I said, are not atrocious. They're not all that bad. This is not a sport SUV though, in any sense of the word, as evidenced by the fact that one, there are no paddles on the steering wheel for your manual shifting. It does have a manual mode if you move the gear selector over, but doing so is gonna lead to some pretty sluggish gear changes. Oh, that was real slow. Kick it down, kick it down. All right, that's not awful, okay, but it's not, this is not a performance SUV, okay? It's better just to leave it in auto mode. In auto mode, it's gonna work its way smoothly through the gears. You do have a sport drive mode that you can go into that is going to improve throttle response and hold those gears for that much longer. It will also turn off the auto start stop system and sport mode is just enough. It will work for your needs, I guarantee that. You do have some other drive modes as well. You've got a smart drive mode that you can think of as kind of like an auto mode, which will work based on your driving behavior. If you're digging into the throttle a lot, then it will give you improved throttle response and hold the gears. If you're not, then it will smooth things out, lead you to a higher gear, improve that fuel economy and ride smoothness. And speaking of ride quality, oh, you also have two other drive modes, Comfort and Eco, but they, as far as I can tell, do the exact same thing, which is just to dampen throttle response and lead you to a higher gear quicker to improve smoothness and fuel economy. So I just leave it in smart mode most of the time. Back to the ride quality. It is excellent in the Telluride. This thing just goes over bumps so smoothly and just leads to a really comfortable daily driver. These seats don't hurt in that regard. They are really well supported and I just find that I could sit in the seat for a long road trip. I actually drove the 2020 Telluride on a five hour, six hour stint and felt fresh by the time I was done with it. Having heated and ventilated seats helps in that regard as well. The only thing that I would love to see is massaging seats, but this is a mainstream SUV, so what do you want? So yes, it's got all those dimensions. It also has really excellent, excellent, excellent? It has excellent visibility. I can see easily out of this front glass. There's a tiny little blind spot in the D pillar, but it's really not bad. And you have the standard blind spot monitoring and the blind spot monitor uh, view thing. I can't remember the name for it, the proprietary key name for it, blind spot view monitor that shows up on the TFT display. So you really shouldn't have any problems not knowing if anything's over in your blind spot. And all the other safety features are top notch. They're all standard. All of the active safety features are standard. And the lane centering assist 
and adaptive cruise control are honestly just as good as you're gonna find in a BMW or Mercedes-Benz vehicle. Seriously, it just doesn't ping pong you in the lane, it keeps you nice and centered in the lane and deals with curves in the road. It's just a really, really good system. And so, the, the Kia Telluride is just a really perfect family SUV, perfect daily driver. There is just the smallest bit of wind and road noise when you're up to freeway speeds but it's all, it's all perfectly understandable given this is a mainstream SUV. If we were talking a luxury SUV like a Lexus or a BMW, I would want slightly better cabin insulation, but as standard, you do have acoustic glass on the Kia Telluride for the windshield, and then when you get up to the SX, you have these the, uh, the film that they put on the front two windows as well. So it does cut down a bit on that wind noise. So I'm very, very impressed with the Kia Telluride, and if you consider that this one fully decked out is just over the 50 grand mark and that's with like some would-be dealer options like carpeted floor mats and the um the cargo cover just nudges over the 50 grand mark this is a really incredible value proposition but let's consider its rivals so the kia telluride starts in lx trim at thirty-three thousand dollars, just over thirty three thousand dollars and then we've got the Honda Pilot as a competitor. That's gonna be, again, just over $33,000, like 33.3. And that one is gonna make four more horsepower than the Telluride with its V6, 295 horsepower. Zero to 60 is gonna be 0.3 seconds faster at 6.7. Top speed is gonna be lower. Fuel economy is going to be one MPG better in all wheel drive form at 22 combined. And the cargo capacity is gonna be a little less than the Telluride. Then we've got the Toyota Highlander. Oh, I didn't mention on the Honda Pilot, if you wanna get the fully decked out black edition, that's gonna be even more expensive than the fully decked out Telluride with the Prestige and black edition package. Go get those fires, firefighters, thank you. Um, that's gonna be $51,400 like for the black edition of the Honda Pilot, so more expensive than this one. And then we've got the Toyota Highlander. That's gonna start at 30, Oh, just under $36,000. It's gonna make, again, four more horsepower than the Kia Telluride at 295. It's gonna get the same zero to 60 as the Honda Pilot, 6.7 seconds, and the cargo capacity is, again, going to be a little less than the Telluride. So that's your spread of the mainstream vehicles. If you wanna bump it up to the entry-level luxury segment, we have the Lincoln Aviator that's gonna start at $52,000. It is, however, going to also start with 400 horsepower. Zero to 60 on that one, boy, that was a long light. Zero to 60 on that one is going to be quicker, 6.0 seconds dead. And the cargo capacity is going to be a little less than all the vehicles in this segment. So that's your spread. And that is why I think the Kia Telluride stacks up really, really nicely. For one, I think it's the most handsome vehicle in this segment. The Lincoln Aviator also looks good, but in terms of mainstream SUVs, I think the Telluride is the best looking one. It also has the nicest cabin to me. If you're gonna get into that luxury segment, you can find better options. But in this mainstream, it doesn't get better than this. Having all of the features, having all the like clean look of this, the technology is pretty darn good. I would like to see wireless Apple CarPlay. I'd love to see a fully digital instrument cluster. Those are two things I would like to see along with a digital rear view mirror. But you know, everything else in this Telluride is really top notch, best you're gonna find in this segment. And the fuel economy, well, if you need hybrid fuel economy, you can't beat the Toyota Highlander Hybrid with its 38 combined MPG. In all other regards though, this Telluride is best in segment. It is worth all of the awards, all the accolades, and the 2021 Nightfall, I was gonna say Black Edition, it is Nightfall Edition, does bring that little extra style to keep it fresh and keep it ahead of the curve. So there you go, Kia Telluride for 2021 with its Nightfall Edition is my pick in this segment of non-hybrid three-row SUVs. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Till then, bye-bye.